Work, huh? If you know a thing or two about herbs and the healing arts, you should talk to the mayor. His companion has been sick for moons now. Poor Mathilda. I've never met a woman more generous than her. She doesn't deserve that. Thanks again! I couldn't have done it without you! You're not from Riverville, are you? What do you want? <sighs> Is that so? What does that have to do with yourself? Hmm. How noble of you. But how do I know you're not a quack? I know nothing about you. Hmm. All right, then. I suppose it can't get any worse than it already is. Come, let's go upstairs. Take a seat. Well then, let's keep this short. For three moons now, Matilda has been hearing voices. Sometimes during the day, sometimes at night. There is no pattern. According to what she told me when she was still lucid, the voices seem to come from the sea. And it's a mixture of pleading, screams, and weeping. Maybe so. Or maybe it is some kind of a ghost, or a magical anomaly. Only Malthus knows. Since the night she first heard the voices, however, her health has been worsening. At first she lost her appetite. Then she started vomiting. To make things even worse, she now has a fever that gets more dire by the minute. Father Vildas is clueless, and even the two apothecaries who quickly passed through the village said they don't know what's wrong with her. She has even stopped recognizing me lately, and talking to her has become impossible. I... I don't want to lie, stranger. I just don't know what to do anymore. If it keeps going like this, Matilda will not see the turn of the year. No. According to what she said to me when she was still lucid, they are just a babble of voices, and a horrible one at that. Yes, and the times when she hears them are her only waking moments. She then starts screaming, on and on, flailing around as if the black guardian stood before her. It's horrible to see her like that. My brother Meldor is a traveling arcanist and has already examined the house for magical anomalies, all to no avail. Whatever causes these voices, it only affects her. 
No, not in the least. You know, Matilda is such a good person. If it is a ghost that has possessed her, then it must be a cruel one who only wants to see her in pain. And if it's a disease, that Malthus shall be damned for making her suffer like this. I, I'm sorry. I should not have said that. I... Hmm, you. Maybe it helps if you were there for one of these... Caesars. I don't feel comfortable about it, but if it could help, we have to give it a try. Just come back in a few hours' time. It hasn't been too long since she had the last one. Give me a moment with her until then, all right? My brother Melder will let you in once it's time. Ah, hello. You're the visitor Jugar told me about, right? The Outlander? Well, as ready as we can be. As Dugar probably told you, the seizures happen arbitrarily, but more often around this time. Come, follow me. While I do appreciate your endeavours, I'm a little sceptical as to what good it will do. Whatever is wrong with Matilda is not ordinary. Hmm, but I suppose some chance is better than none, isn't it? You have a visitor, Dugar. Thank you, Meldor. And thank you for not changing your mind. It could happen any minute now. Just take a seat and wait. And I warn you, this is not going to be pleasant. Oh, Matilda. No, please. I... No. Oh, and here we go. They are coming. They are coming back. No. 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 Please don't. Ah! <laughs> 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 No other way. Bentas. So? You mean, you heard the voices? What are you, some kind of medium? Pentas? I... I don't know, but... That was the fisherman, don't you remember? The one who collaborated with the brigands and was killed when he tried to resist the arrest. Ah, yes, of course. And his companion drowned herself afterwards. Poor thing. But I don't understand. What, by the righteous path, does that have to do with Matilda's sickness? Something tells you this, I see. Hmm. If the circumstances were any different, I would take you for a quack, trying to win my favor. But you seem honest, and I shouldn't leave anything untested. Meldor, where was that fisherman's house again? I have a map. Then give it to him. Uh, of course, brother. If Pentus really has anything to do with this, you should take a look at his old house. It should be abandoned. And now excuse me, both of you. I... I need some time for myself. Here, this is the map. His house isn't far from the village, but you should be careful nonetheless. I don't need to tell you that the animals have grown savage recently. This red madness, or whatever they call it. This holy order, by the gods, you really do have Outlander written all over your face. But no, I am not. I have, as all the magically gifted have, passed the walk to the water, but I didn't qualify to become a keeper or a magister. And to be honest, I didn't want to either.
a free arcanist, as are many others. But with all due respect, I think we should save the talk for later. Matilda's condition gets worse by the minute. Hmm? As I said, he was a traitor. He collaborated with the brigands on the Penny Road. He played innocent, but eventually the guards found out and tried to arrest him. Well, as it happened, he tried to play Lorem Waterblade and attacked them, which didn't go well for him. His wife couldn't cope with that, so she took her life. A tragic story, but it was his choice. That's life.
I am sure, Nero, that's the problem. Otherwise I wouldn't say all this, would I? Hmm... What should we do? Nothing. I beg your pardon? I said nothing. Whatever Madame Fellowall's reasons were, it's her and this Meldor who have to answer to Malfas in the end, not us. But... Pentas, if this Meldor doesn't have a problem sleeping with his brother's wife, then only the Black Guardian knows what he's willing to do to make sure no one ever finds out. Today, when I prepared the catch, I don't know, it just came to me. So you want us to name our child after an idea you had while disemboweling fish? You make it sound so bad. Do I? Look, if you don't like it, we will find another one. It's still a while, after all. Ben does. I'm just mocking you. I like the name. I really do. Jael, this is madness! Do you even listen to yourself? What, do you think I enjoy this? Please, Pintas, don't make this any harder than it already is. Your chances are best if you cooperate. Chances? In the best case, I will spend the rest of my life in jail. Whoever told you this rubbish is a bloody liar, damn it! And now, you... And now, I will count to three. If you haven't dropped that knife by then, jail will be the least of your worries. Oh, will it now? Because you'll kill me, right? Are you so blind, Jael? This guy, he's not from the guard. He's a damned sellsword. One. My sir, I think there's no need to. Two. <laughs> Bad idea. <laughs>
shit. That woman would rather fuck with a Vatir than a sissy like you. Sissy? Fucking watch what you're saying? Oh, is my little coal man pal threatening me? What are you gonna do, huh? Throw herbs at me till I say sorry? Oh, just shut the fuck up, will you? Crocker wants the next batch delivered by the next moon's turn. And we don't even have a fucking barrel yet. So quit the chatter and start working. Stupid wench. <laughs>
Oh, um, hello. So, did you find anything? What? This is ridiculous. Who do you think you are? What? Oh, sod it. I never wanted anyone to get hurt. You have to believe me. The whole thing, it, it just... it got out of hand. Oh... Jugar, she never loved him, you know? The only reason they stayed companions was her path-abidingness, and that a divorce would have shamed him before the villagers. She started it, not I. I mean, yes, I gave in to it, and yes, I love her, damn it. But, oh, oh, by Malthus, what did I get myself into? Yes, we always met on the beach at night, shortly before dawn. That fisherman, he must have gotten up earlier that day, and he saw us. I mean, he tried to act as if he didn't, but he did sure of it. Yes, yes, that's what I told Matilda, too. But she was so afraid, you know, that her entire life would be shattered to pieces and that she would never be granted the eternal paths. <laughs> yes, yes, he probably would have. At least Matilda, she could do anything and he would forgive her because he idolises her. He was always like that, you know. He always thought the best way to win a woman would be to put her on a pedestal in the stars and worship her down on earth. And he never realised that this was exactly the reason why the girls never so much as glanced at him and why Matilda eventually went looking for a real man. No, I mean, yes, I hired that cell sword, but he was only supposed to intimidate him. Maybe make him move somewhere else. Not kill him, for heck's sake. Please, my sir, you have to believe me. This sickness Matilda has, these voices, they are Malthus's punishment for what we both did to that poor man. She will never wake up again. I can feel it. And if you tell Jugar the truth about what happens now, you will accomplish nothing. Don't you see it? Nothing but break a man who has already been broken. What? No, you can't do that. Please, I'm horribly sorry, and I regret what I have done. What else do you want? No, forgive me, but I cannot do that. I will... What the...? No, no, help me, I...
Fever, it is gone. The fever is gone. She's still weak, but it's gone. Just like that. What happened? What did you find in that fisherman's house? And where is Meldor? What? By Malthus, I... Uh, I see... I suppose I should thank you, shouldn't I? At least, now I know the truth. I don't know. What Matilda and Meldor have done, hiring that assassin, it's horrible, beyond redemption. But still, she lives. And Malthus, forgive me my selfishness, I'm glad she does. I am so glad. I need to think about this, but right now, I can't. In my scribery, there's a small casket on the table. Here's the key for it. Whatever is in there, it should compensate you for your efforts. Now, please, leave me. Greetings. Mm hmm. Walk blessed. Some things never change. 